was so hot that I remember waking up and seeing Debbie just chilling on the bench and then hearing bleh, bleh, and I was like, what the hell? Debbie was awfully sick um, because it was really hot and humid and she got heat exhaustion or something. And I'm like, yo, what's up? You all right? And she's like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. And she's super red. Threw up, I think. Bloody nose, maybe? Stuff, symptoms. She's just sweating. She's like, I was just woke up and I felt sick and I started throwing up and I was like, dang. I was like, you feeling hot? <laughs> Cause it's hot. So Caitlin starts trying to get like a wet towel on me and giving me a fan and they're really trying to help me out here. We were trying to get her to drink water and it wasn't really working. She was just kind of lying around and just felt awful. After a while, I was still not feeling well. I was still throwing up in a bag. Well, actually on the floor because we were in grass. So we decided instead of having our normal breakfast, which is usually something like cereal or whatever we can make, sandwich or whatever, we decided to go to Waffle House and bask in free AC. The coolness of Waffle House was like the most amazing thing I have felt like that whole piece of being in heat. I am half Belgian and um, Debbie and I had a trip long argument about waffles. I'm not sure she thought it was a trip long argument, but it, I was very passionate about it because I love waffles so much. So you wanna to talk to me about the waffles? Well, I love waffles. All right. Debbie doesn't like Waffle House waffles. They have more flavor, I'll give them that. But they're too thin for me. I mean, they are bigger, but they're too thin. And I like the really fluffy, huge waffles. I think that Waffle House waffles are certainly not as good as the waffles that exist in Belgium. I think they are insanely superior to the things that people call Belgian waffles that exist in America that are disgusting. I get my receipt back and <laughs> I just look at the top left corner, it's just like blue white boy. It was just like, ah, this place is great. It was, it was amazing. Um, Debbie didn't die, so that was good too. From then on, we started to like be more on top of Debbie because we didn't want her to like pass out. So there are two ways to get out of Galveston, right? Galveston is a barrier island um, south of Houston. You can either drive back through Houston or you can take a ferry eastward heading towards Louisiana. The ferry is free. It was free and it was a ferry and it added like 20 minutes. Like, why would we not do that? I'm glad we got to take this baby on a ferry, right? It's getting a little adventure. It's like, whoa, I get to take a ride on a vehicle? <laughs> Debbie, do you want to go upstairs? They <laughs> or or when I get towed. <laughs> this has never been a good thing before. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like freaking out right now. It's like, oh shit, what did I do? want to take this while I go to the bathroom? Uh, the I the guess. Tow boat? The restroom will remain locked until vessel is underway. Ooh, Wait, it says tough. please remain in vehicle until vessel is guy gets all the cool treatment. I love it. He gets to take the ferry. He gets to sleep in a hotel tonight. No shows. <laughs> he gets to not play any shows. <laughs> and I get the cool shot too. <laughs> Getting all the perks. Oh, that's nice. That's air conditioned in there. I'll tell you what. It's like, I want to enjoy like standing out there and everything, but there's air conditioning. <laughs> you gotta really, you know, enjoy it while you can. Yeah. We're gonna be on that bus for much longer. <laughs> like four more hours today. Mm -hmm. Just take a lot of these with me because I got the most jump shirt on. That's a hot shirt right there, I tell you what. I tell you what. Ooh. Oh, 
repping all the bands over here, except for the other two. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Huh? He ain't got shirts. Yeah, he ain't got no stupid shirts. Yeah, it's true. And if he did, they'd be stupid. Oh! How oh. you like it? Well, oh, really? So I see they have the underground They might have something like life <laughs> <sure. laughs> Which might be something like, you're interested in. Danger! And I was like, like <laughs> And then she's like, you need to wear your hat. Yeah. <laughs> Start talking about the Bible. Like, no. That's a that's a no. Bible name. That's a Bible name. <laughs> 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 I was getting tired. How do you name your kid that? So we're all chilling on the ferry, hanging out. We were having a great time at that on that ferry. It was everything we wanted. They gave us a time saying what time the, the ferry was gonna stop. And I think I forgot how it happened, but one of the guys said, um, you know, who has the keys? Does anyone have keys? And nobody had keys? Poppy forgot the keys in the bus. We, like, had... I'm pretty sure we had less than three minutes from the time of realizing to actually docking. Nobody's got the key. We're all like, what do we do? What do we do? So you know what I do? I use the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> we don't need that many chefs in the kitchen. <laughs> The roof, we gotta climb on the roof. We're gonna fit our hand in the socket to open the thing. <laughs> so we go back down, everybody's getting ready, everybody else is getting in their car to like leave and drive off once it's open. And we're like, oh shit, oh shit, we gotta hurry up. So there was no way to get in that bus except at the top of the emergency hatch. We had the trap door on the top open and that we could open it and get in through there. Eamon went up to this guy and was like, hey, we locked the keys in the thing, so if we don't move, that's like, we don't lock the keys. And this guy was so uninterested in what we were saying, like, I'd be more concerned. I'd be like, yo, can you, do you need help, you know? But no. So I was really all about doing everything I could to redeem myself. And um, when Eamon and Albert said they'd hoist me up there, I was like, yeah, let's go for it. And then I was immediately in the air. It was just, it happened so quickly. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then boom, I was up there. Like there was no planning, no discussion. It was just boom, 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 get us up there. You know, of course, Sean. Sorry, Poppy. <laughs> Put that away. So oh, God, I should be getting these shots. <laughs> and it took me a second to figure out how to open the trap door, but Eamon explained it to me, walked me through it. I was able to do it. And we didn't delay anyone. It was like exact. Woo! Hurry! <laughs> Woo! 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 Oh shit. Yeah, we're good. You just gotta get it. Marine law, safety first. Stop engine. Set break. Don't forget your fucking keys, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> I am forever thankful that we were stupid enough to leave the top hatch open so we could do something to get inside our bus. You're nothing but a baseball. Striking me out, giving me ball, baseball. Man, that cracker jack, yeah. Ooh, that's a dreamy shot, girl. Shit. Looking fly as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the next day we went to New Orleans. This was my second favorite part of the, the tour. I've always wanted to go to New Orleans. So you already know, go to New Orleans. It's like, it's gonna be popping, <laughs> no matter what. So we get there and of course, half the people we're with are foodies. So we gotta do the food thing first. <laughs> Beignets. That was all I was really looking for in um, New Orleans. We go to the Cafe du Moulin, whatevs. We get our powder on. <laughs> Should I start over? We go to Cafe du Monde and we get our beignets or whatever and our coffees. They sold Cafe au lait 
and that is like my favorite type of coffee ever. Like I literally make that at home and I didn't even know there was a word for it. Basically, half coffee, half milk. How is it? That pinky up! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Met up with our friend Kevin, who we're staying with. Kevin is somebody who was actually in Mr. Big Deal with myself and Frisco way back when, playing a sick trombone um, and really tying everything together in that band. I was instantly hyped. We had like a billion cats and the like like a psychic dog or something. It was like, you could tell in its eyes that it could see the future. Kevin had to go to work, so he said he was gonna meet up with us in um, where around the French Quarters was in New Orleans. So we were like, okay, okay. So we're gonna take the day and just walk around. <laughs> into a shoe shine because it's like a thing there because already like five people had tried to do it to us but we didn't know what was happening but if you're ever in new orleans someone's gonna approach you being like oh i like your shoes oh i bet i could tell you exactly where you got those shoes and then they'll sneakily squirt some shoe soap on there and then you already have to get shine, cause and like you really shine converse. So if someone comes up to you, asking, telling you how they can tell you where you got your shoes, you tell them you got them on your feet. Towards the end of the day, we hit up this one bar to see some live music, see if there's any open mics around. There's none, but there's some live music that's pretty all right. So we chill there. <laughs> Everybody's pretty drained. Um, <clears throat> gets a little bit late and everybody's like, all right, let's go. I was like, dang, I was really hoping for a little bit more craziness. Like, it's like aside from that, it was my last night. It's still like, guys, you realize this is New Orleans, like. New Orleans. <laughs> and so we left there and then eventually me and Caitlin split off and had a real New Orleans night. So, yeah. Get a sick kick from me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that was another episode. See you guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching! Yo, like, comment, subscribe. Check us out on Patreon. We're the Pigeon Pack. Soon to be seagull pack. Uh oh.